Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here, and welcome back to the Guns of One. And today we're going to take a look at a vehicle in Battlefield 1 that is not only an absolute monster in competent hands, but also a design that set the standard for armoured warfare for decades to come. It is the Renault FT-17. The Renault FT originally began life as the Holt Caterpillar Tractor. Uh, this was a logistics vehicle that was equipped with Caterpillar tracks, allowing it to traverse the muddy battlefields more effectively. Allegedly, Louis Renault began work on the design of the FT as early as December of 1915, where he was approached by Colonel J.B.E. Esteen. Esteen had plans for a tracked armoured vehicle that was based on the Holt tractor, and he proposed the idea to Renault. Renault, however, declined the proposal, stating that the company could not possibly produce the vehicle due to the capacity at which they were already working to produce material for the war effort. So Esteen instead took the plan to the Schneider Company, who ended up producing France's first operational tank, the Schneider CEA. In 1916, Esteen proposed the idea again to Renault and asked him to reconsider it. This time, he agreed and a prototype tank was produced. It's widely believed that due to the speed that the project reached the prototype stage, that it's possible that Renault had been secretly working on the design the whole time. Renault was a realist, and he tried to keep the vehicle's design within a realistic specification. The proposed vehicle had a weight limit of 7 tons in order to allow it to have a reasonable power to weight ratio using Renault production engines. The tank itself had a number of internal mechanisms that were revolutionary for its time. It had an automatic tensioning system for the tracks to help stop the tracks from derailing or coming off. It also had a rounded tailpiece, a design later unofficially dubbed a ducktail, that helped it to cross the trenches. And the engine was designed to function normally even when slanted, so the tank could climb slopes without losing power. But the most revolutionary part of the FT's design was undoubtedly its turret. The FT is credited in history as being the first operational tank to ever have its main weapons contained in a fully rotating turret. Its primary armament was a 37mm cannon, and due to its low velocity, it proved to be ineffective against armour. However, it was suitable for anti-infantry use, with high explosive shells and the shotgun-like canister shells. The centrally mounted turret with the engine at the rear would become the standard for tanks of the future all the way till today, where modern main battle tanks follow the same basic layout. The FT-17 entered service in 1917 and eventually proved to be a fairly effective design. With only 22mm of armour at its thickest, it definitely wasn't the most well protected, but its armament more than made up for it. The tank was fairly fast compared to other tanks of the time and exhibited good mobility over rough ground too. Its main drawback was its size. The tank was a mere 5 meters or 16 feet long, and 1.7 meters or nearly 6 feet wide. This meant that it was cramped and could only fit a crew of two. This meant that while one crew member performed the role of the driver, another person had to perform the role of commander, loader, and gunner. This led to ineffective vehicle control and high amounts of crew fatigue. In modern tank crews, the jobs are actually split between three different members of the crew. So, while the commander tracks and acquires targets as well as commands the vehicle, the gunner sights and fires at the target and then the loader maintains and loads the weapons. It's a far more effective setup that allows each person to be more focused on a single task and doesn't overtax them. But with just one person to do those jobs in the FT-17, you can imagine how much harder it would have been. Overall, the rendering of the FT-17 in Battlefield 1 is fairly realistic. It looks and performs as it would have in real life, and even features weapons that fit the roles of its real-life counterparts. Even the loadouts in Battlefield are realistic. The howitzer loadout, for example, actually existed. A variant of the FT-17 was produced called the FT-75, which featured a short-barreled 75mm howitzer, just like the one in the game. Several other variants were produced during its lifetime, and the design was reproduced in many other countries under license for several years after the war had ended. But that's the story of the FT-17, the standard by which all other tanks were eventually created, and anyone that's played Battlefield 1 by now will surely tell you that a fully rotating turret can really make a difference. 
and such was the way on the battlefields of the First World War. But let me know what you guys think. Is the dinky little French tank a real war winning weapon or is it simply being overhyped? And what would you like to see in the next episode of Guns of One? Let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.